Okay, so our goal is order one handoff time, right? So the thought is, can we cause only one core to send messages rather than all the cores? That is, can we have each core on a different cache line? So currently, we're all waiting on the same ticket, right? We're all, all the CPUs are looking at the same current ticket value, and that is at a single address in memory, and so it's a single cache line that they're all shared and they're all having them validate and validate and so on, all that stuff, right? Or in the case of the regular test and spin lock, we're just looking at the value of the single value of the lock again. So the idea is let's go ahead and somehow have different cache lines to deal with this. So that's something that a lock called an MCS lock can do. So MCS lock uh, just stands for the, the three authors, the last names of the three authors. And so the idea is every CPU has this. So every CPU is going to have a Q node struct in local memory by, by that what I mean in their own address. So it can't be a global. Instead, this is going to usually be on the stack. Because since we know every CPU has its own stack, we know that if we declare a global on the stack, it'll be at its own address. And what's this going to look like? It's going to look like this. So we're going to declare a Q node. So the idea is, unlike the ticket system, where basically what we did is we had a single number that showed what the current uh, ticket is, and everyone went ahead and grabbed and looked at it every time. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to put people in a line. We're going to put each of the CPUs in a line according to the order they arrive. And um, each one is looking at its own locked value. So a lock locks a cunid pointer to the tail of the list. And while we're waiting, we're just spinning on this locked leg. So uh, let me let me give you a diagram. So we have here, this is a lock. Right? And what we've got are some Q nodes. So that's a lock. That is, when we acquire a lock, we are going to go ahead and put ourselves at the end of this queue. So let's look at the code of this. One thing about the uh, MCS locks is they do require a slightly different API in that not only do you pass in a lock, you also pass in a Q node to both the acquire and the release. Okay, so what happens? Here's a lock. Let's see, we want to go ahead and acquire. So, what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and pass in the lock, and we're going to pass in a new Q. And what's going to happen? So we're going to set the Q nodes next to null. All right, so what we're going to do, right, predecessor points to Q, lock points, so predecessor points to this new Q, lock points to the last Q. So we're going to atomically swap these two pointers. So after the atomic operation, predecessor now points here and lock points here. If predecessor is now null, that means there was no last. There was no one in the queue waiting, and therefore we have acquired the lock, and we're done. Otherwise, then we're going to go ahead and mark this guy as locked. Right, we'll mark that as locked, and then we will go ahead and update this to here. So now we have our linked list, which is Q, 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 and lock point to the last one. And that satisfies our invariance. And then this particular CPU that did this acquire is going to be spinning on this lock. The CPU that did this acquire is spinning on, sorry, spinning on this value. The CPU that acquired this lock is spinning on its value in here. The CPU that acquired this one is spinning in here. And this presumably is a CPU that has the, uh, is the lock holder. You can satisfy yourself that actually this uh, atomic exchange satisfies the fact that even if multiple uh, CPUs are 
executing the choir at the same time that we're still going to end up with a linked list of all of them. On a release, what do we do? We're going to go ahead and look and see, is there anyone next after us? Okay. So if there is not anyone next, then we're going to go ahead and compare. So our compare and swap is going to check and see, are we the current lock? So we might not be because of this exchange up here. Okay. And so we're going to go ahead and autonomously, if we are the current one, then go ahead and set us to null atomically. Otherwise, that means someone else has, uh, is after us. So there's some other item back here. Okay. So the two possibilities are when we looked, there was, uh, there was, there was a next, or there wasn't a next when we looked, but then when we did the swap, lock didn't point to us. Okay. So in either of those cases, we do have some next. We will go ahead and um, at least we're going to have a next because it may be that the next isn't set until here. So we've got to wait after the exchange, which is where we turn the compare and swap field, uh, and waiting for the next to be set. So that's what we wait for here. And notice it's important the lock to set to true before we set this next. So we go through, we loop, we wait until next is set. Once it is, we go there and we say, okay, you are now unlocked. And that will then allow that next person in line to go ahead and break out of their loop right here. So it's certainly somewhat more involved. It's some more code, but the key, key thing to keep in mind is we have order one handoff. Why do we have order one handoff? Well, what are we doing here? We're going to have to here send out a pair of messages. Here we're going to need to read. Here we're going to need to send out and invalidate. And then over on the reading side, the key thing is when we do this invalidate here, it's only going to be invalidating one particular CPU, not invalidating more than one CPU. So that CPU is going to do a fixed amount of messages. We did a fixed amount of messages, so we now have our order one time. Let's look at how this then affected the uh, throughput of how many acquires we can do per millisecond based on the number of cores. Right? So what we can see here is the ticket lock goes ahead and just gets worse and worse and worse. Whereas we look at something like the MCS lock up here in the green, it does pretty good. Right? We have a little bit of, of up and down. We actually go up here and go down a little bit, but we look to be uh, linear in the sense that after, what, about six cores, six or seven cores, we just plateau. But the key thing is we also don't get any worse. There is something called a CLH lock, so it's based sort of on, a, on an MCS lock. It was three different authors. I don't think the Cs are the same. And their advantage here, the CLS lock, is it actually keeps the same API, so we don't have to change the acquire and release API. And they do that with some sort of trickery uh, in some sense about still having a Q node, but having it on the stack declared in the acquire, and it still sticks, I mean, it's, 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 it's some funniness. Um, one thing about the CLH lock, I believe it's patented, so that is a disadvantage. You can also see a, another graph that shows performance, again, 